Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is a look at the difference between the Hue mask built in with Affinity Photo 2 and the macro I wrote a little while ago on Hue Selection. So first of all, let's go to the Affinity version 2. Where is it? The mask. There we go. Click on the mask icon there and down to Hue Range Mask. And let's say we want to select that pink of that, that Thing. So I can just track this around here. I can get to where the pink is mostly selected and I can sort of bring this in here. Best selection of it. And here we go. That'll do. One of the issues you find with this is this down here is also being selected. It doesn't look like pink, but if I drag the pipette here and down over the top of that you can see the red is the highest value item there. So what I can do with this, there's two things in a way. I can mask directly onto this because this is in itself kind of adjustment then I've actually got a built-in mask I can paint over it but normally this sort of thing I put a secondary mask on. So I'll go to here and I'm going to say mask layer and just an ordinary mask and they get a paintbrush to paint in black I can then paint out this and the reason I use a separate layer is if I fluff it up I can just delete it and start again so I'm just getting rid of this here yeah I could try using something like a luminosity mask and I did try it with this but it just wasn't very effective so I can just paint out the bits in here we just want to keep and let's leave those bits up there so now I've got that, I can do something with it, which is, and I'm going to go here just to compare, go to live filters and go to half toning. And then I'm going to go from monochrome to color and then I can change the cell size to, to the size that I want. And then I want to mask that there so that I can actually drag that down onto the background layer then click and shift click so I've got both masks selected and drop those onto the half tone. And there we go, I've got that mask. And because it's a live mask, I can actually go in and play around with it. So I go into the here and I could adjust this if it to see if I can get that a little bit more adjusted. Um, I could go onto the paint mask and paint further onto this. So if I don't like those flowers up there, I can just paint those out. And I can go to even to the half tone and change the cell size again to, to suit. See, I've got some things around there, so I'll just go back to the mask again and make sure I've got black selected and paint on that to get rid of any extra bits on it. Anyway, that's that one. So let's try now the one that I did. This is my Hue selection here. I'm just going to use the first one here. The extra ones have just got more bells and whistles on, but I'll use the simplest one. So I need to be to take this here and just hit on a the smart and simple. And what this does, it takes a copy here, it does a merge visible and drops it on top here. So that if I click on the bottom one to the here to make that transparent, I can see now I'm just selecting off a, a copy of the bottom layer. So now what I can do with this is I'm going to do a, the way I normally do this, I turn it down, the width and the feathering, so then you play around the middle. And you can see here, uh, this, as I track this across here, it goes through that cycle. So I can find a point where, there we go, there's, the, there's that here. So I go to the middle of that point, I then turn up the width, again to make sure I've got this covered. And maybe a bit of feathering just to soften the edges of that. Problem with this is that, you know, as before, I've got all this other stuff here, but this is what MonoProtect is for. MonoProtect will then exclude anything close to monochrome. And if again I take the, the pipette and go over these here, see that red 88, green 74, blue 73, they're fairly close. And when red, green and blue are close together, you've got a monochrome. So. I'll turn up the mono protect and this then starts to get rid of those other areas. You may still need to do a bit of masking on this. 
and you might be able to do something by playing around with some of these here so maybe I can take the width down there a bit I only can go so far with that and I can feather the monochrome protection as well maybe I'll do a bit more of it because the more I, I track upwards with this the more it's going to actually start selecting colors as well quite a long way there before it starts affecting that pink of the this little vehicle here so there look at all this I've selected just with that without having to put an additional mask on I can't always do that of course so now I can go to this layer here go to the half toning change that to color change the cell size to what I want on it and then I can just put the bottom layer in so it fill in the rest of the gap everything's appeared like this at the moment and that's because I've gone above the layer here so I need to just drag it into this group here and there we go I've got that half toned say again if I wanted to do a little bit more masking on that it's a lot easier now I've got a lot less to fiddle around with I can always put a mask on there go to a paintbrush in black and then kind of paint out the areas I don't want to be covered there's anything else here that's come down I seem to have selected that pretty well there so you've got the the original one and the one with my uh, my own macro on it done with procedural texture and both work the a new one from affinity photo in version 2 is good for a lot of things a lot of quick and easy stuff particularly where they haven't got this sort of darker areas to deal with but that monochrome protection can make it a lot easier in many other tasks so it depends upon the type of picture you know, I would be doing as to whether I'd use one or the other I try to use the native one first because it's quicker but the second one I would of course use if I need to anyway that's it and thank you very much for watching